Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest is a trailblazer. In 2017, she made history as the first female president in Benedict College's 147-year history, and she's on her way to becoming one of the institution's longest-serving executives. Since becoming president, she's lowered tuition by 26%, raised almost half a million dollars in donations for the university, and launched, launched HBCU Sustainability Summit. And she's getting started. Yes. She's just getting started. Please welcome President of the Digest HBCU's year, year of the, uh, sorry, excuse me, HBCU of the year, yes. Dr. Rosalind Clark Artis. Yes. Clark Artis. Thank you. Welcome Thank to you. the show. It is my delight to be here. Yes, absolutely. So I just got it. We, we were talking about this at, at, during the break. Uh -huh. You lowered tuition 26%. Yes. How did you do that and still, the, the school is still thriving? So the trend nationally for all institutions is that tuition tends to go up annually by CPI, cost uh, pricing, consumer price index. Uh, we decided we wanted to go the opposite direction. We took a look at what our students were able to pay based on their eligibility for Pell Grants, loans, et cetera. Took a look at our state tuition grant policies and decided that to charge more than our students are able to pay didn't make any sense. Wow. We were putting black kids in debt. Yes. That is not our goal, right? Yes. That is never our goal. Right, 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 right. So let's talk about your journey into yes. becoming the first black president of Benedict College. Uh, it's been a circuitous journey. Uh, I had the <laughs> honor and distinction of being named in 17 after having served as the first female president of another HBCU, Florida Memorial University, mm -hmm. down in Miami yes. for a little over four years. So it's my second time being a first. Yes. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Trailblazer. Yeah. Uh, I, so people say glass breaker, which yeah. is sort of interesting because uh, the glass has to go somewhere. Right? Yeah. It falls down on you. So as mm. sisters, we have to be really careful about that. I like that. Mm -hmm. I think, um, have to take care of each other a little bit. Yeah, well, absolutely. You know we got to talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> the controversy surrounding Trump. How yeah. did that happen? So, uh, interestingly, I keep saying to people, I got trumped. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's a thing. It's a thing. Mm -hmm. um, so we actually were the host to the 2020 Justice Forum mm -hmm. uh, Bipartisan Presidential Summit, uh, which really was addressing the singular issue of criminal justice reform. Mm -hmm. uh, it is an issue that I am passionate about. I believe impacts our communities to a significant degree, and so was happy to be the host at mm -hmm. Benedict College mm -hmm. uh, okay. for the forum. Uh, it is bipartisan by nature, so mm -hmm. the assumption was that candidates on both sides of the aisle would be invited. Right. Um, we knew that. Uh, certainly. I knew that, that candidates on both sides were, uh, were invited. A little surprised that a sitting president who was effectively unopposed mm. would choose to participate in the summit. So got a little surprised by that. Um, and then uh, amplified the surprise by declaring it an official visit of the White House, which mm. meant he was not participating necessarily in, in the, the summit, summit right. in its present form, right? Q&A and those kinds of things with students, but rather was going to come and effectively deliver a speech. Uh, would agree to stay on topic, meaning to discuss criminal justice reform, um, but sort of set his own rules, which the leader of the free world gets to do, even mm. if it happens to be Donald Trump. So wow. um, we were one upped a little bit on that one yeah, um, by the like White House. And yet the reality is, um, as unpleasant as some of those policies may be, uh, the reality is our students um, need to be connoisseurs of both sides. Yes. Uh, they need to hear and think through opinions and ideas on both sides. And I think, you know, his decision to. Um, to address the students without an opportunity necessarily for them to respond or question probably left an impact with them and they'll make some decisions when they vote. Mm. How about okay, it? Okay, positive yeah. way of looking at it. I yes, like that a lot. Absolutely. What were the feed what, what what was some of the feedback from the students? Um, so the in interesting thing was um, we had about thirty two students participate, so mm -hmm. the media reported widely that there were about seven Benedict students. Yeah, there. Like yeah. Six. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah. Not so. A little confusion because we had seven students that are known as our borough scholars. So mm -hmm. they are just the cream of the crop in our school of business and their benefactor, a trustee Tyrone Burroughs was actually on program that day. Mm. So those students were present in their beautiful purple jackets right. representing Benedict College. And so uh, the assumption that those were the only Benedict students in the room um, kind of carried on social media. But the reality was students who were not in uniform uh, dressed in their normal street clothes right, were right. Uh, interspersed throughout the audience. And a little over 30 students just wanted to kind of hear what he had to say. say yes. um, it was live stream. So students who were not there obviously could hear it as well. Mm -hmm. But um, I think this, you know, soundbite society that's says, oh my goodness, students were excluded, 
not so. Students who wanted to participate walked over there, walked through security, and sat down and heard what he had to say. Yes, yes. Did, have you heard any of their feedback? Um, so I think um, the students primarily uh, were interested in his taking credit for things like increasing uh, funding to HBCUs. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a six of one half dozen of another. Mm -hmm. We have seen an increase in funding, 14.3% uh, during this presidency. Mm -hmm. uh, we've also seen um, some threatened cuts to yep. things like federal work study, yeah. mm -hmm. which hurt our kids fairly significantly. And so, as is always the case when a politician gets the mic, they want to talk about the great things they've done. Yeah. Um, our kids were have a spirit of discernment. Yes, of right? course. They looked and they saw and they could appreciate the gains, but they also had some questions in their minds about whether, in fact, they were really better off on the whole. Mm -hmm. Right, and so, right. Uh, there will be some ongoing discussions about that on our campus, yes, which is really the goal. Right. Well, speaking of discussions, uh, the uh, HBCU, what you have created, HBCU Sustainability Summit, yeah. uh, is going to address certain things. Uh, it's, it's, we're going to point back to an op-ed in the New York Times mm -hmm. talking about the state of HBCUs, but the great things that we've done. 80% yeah. of the nation's black judges, 50% mm -hmm. of the nation's black doctors, and most of the black middle class attended right. HBCUs. What is your summit going to do so that we don't have to depend um, on so federal, really yeah, federal finances. Just summed it up in the question, right? The goal is for these institutions to be self-sustaining. Mm -hmm. So um, to kind of go back to the Trump conversation, right? There was a whole lot of um, there was a whole lot of chatter about she should have just said no. Mm -hmm. You are not welcome here. Um, she should have said no. Well, that's interesting when sixty plus percentage of our budget comes from federal funding, right? Right. And so we have to be self-sustaining. We have to have choices and options and be strong enough financially to say no if we choose yeah. to say no. Yes. Um, currently, our HBCUs are not in that position, and right. that's just the reality of the fact. Well, why do you think that is? Do you think that uh, while we're in school, undergrad, uh, getting uh, you know uh, higher education degrees, MBAs, are you? Is, is it that is not drilled to us to give back as an alumni? Yeah. Uh, you know that mm -hmm. should that should be an ongoing thing. I think right. from the from the day you go through freshman orientation, it, it should be consistent where, that it's just second nature. Do you? Right. What do you think it is? So I think. Philanthropy is learned. Uh, we have yeah. not come from right. um, a history of wealth, mm. right? And so we've had barely enough to take care of our families. Yes. And so we have not drilled into our students. We haven't had the yeah. benefit of generational yeah. wealth mm -hmm. uh, where you ought to give something back because generally it's unearned wealth in our majority communities, um, yeah. unearned inherited wealth. Our young people have not had the benefit of that. So we have to teach philanthropy and the importance of giving back. You know, we're very fortunate at Benedict College, our alumni do give back. Yes. Um, do a little bit over a million dollars for the last five years running. Benedict College alumni have stepped up. Um, unfortunately, that wouldn't completely replace our federal government investment, right. and yet it's pretty strong. It's yes. pretty strong by comparison to a lot of HBCUs. Right, but you are doing the work with your summit, right. and I know so That's many awesome. people are gonna be there to help. We are both graduates mm -hmm. of HBCUs. Yes. Right. Thank mm -hmm. you so much mm -hmm. for your work and what you're doing and looking graceful That's while you're doing kind it. Of my you. God, Thank my you. God. Thank you. Uh, please make sure you follow up with uh, Dr. Artis and all that she is doing with the HBCU Sustainability Summit. Thank you so much. I appreciate yes. you. Thank you for having me. Yeah.